personal computer power supplies, what to do with them. I have a pile of them, as you see in this picture, and I'm going to show you how to use them in a slightly different way than most people do. Now, the web has a number of projects where people have converted these to bench top power supplies. I'm going to go to a slightly different route and use them a different way. Let's move on through the slides. Here is a connector that I built. This works with a ATX2. I could use an ATX1, but an ATX2 is better for a number of reasons. This is the on-off switch. And you'll notice an LED here. This is for the 5 volt standby LED. That tells me the main power supply is plugged in. And this LED is power on. It should be a gray wire. I didn't have a gray wire. It happens to be white. Here's another view of the connector. It plugs into the main connector, of course, of the power supply. From this, I get 3.3, 5 volts, 12 volts, minus 12, and plus 5 volts standby. Now we're going to use these slightly differently. Let's look through some of the photographs. Here I blew up the picture size so you could get a better look. This, I brought the connections out to a terminal, screw type terminal blocks. In addition to those connectors, you have these connectors. Let's blow this up a bit so you can see it better. You have these connectors that are also on the power supplies that many people cut off for some reason. I wouldn't do it. The point of me going the route that I did is I don't have to butcher my uh, power supply connections. From these, these two yell this four pin plug, you got two 12 volt connections and two grounds. This normal floppy or hard drive. This is a hard plug for a hard drive or CD-ROM. has five, two grounds, and plus 12. This is obviously a SATA connector plug. It has three, five, 12, and two grounds. This is a variation of what somebody else built for using an ATX power supply. It was wrong and I had to correct it. Nonetheless, this is what you typically end up with. With an ATX1 or just ATX, you have to tie in a 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor from 5 volts to ground just to get it to come on. Um, you have plus 5 volts uh, standby which they use to, to do nothing as a power indicator. Oh, I got a lot more uses for the standby than just a power indicator. And here are your various connections. Here is a look at the typical 24-pin ATX2 plug. Again, it's color-coded yellow is 12, orange is 3, Red is five. <coughs> Red is five. There is no, there is no white wire in the particular one that I had, and it doesn't exist. You have a power good. It's gray, brown, some more blacks and oranges. Okay, the blue is minus twelve. The yellow is plus twelve. Green is power supply on. If I connect green to ground, it will turn on the power supply, and blue gives me minus 12 volts. So there is no minus 5 in a PS2, at least the one that I'm using. Here's another look at that particular connector. This color coding is pretty standard on the plugs as I have found them. All right. Here's the schematic to my setup and why it differs. These are the outputs on the terminal blocks. On the particular power supply that I use, it's a light on PS8251. 
I can get 3.3 volts at almost 17 amps, 5 volts at 16 amps, 12 volts at 18 amps, but the minus 12 is only 300 milliamps. Now the purple, which is your plus 5 volt standby, it will, and it's on all the time, if the power supply is plugged in, this will always be present and this is the indicator LED for that. You can use this power supply without even flipping on the main power supply to operate an Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Now here is a typical manual single throw closed switch. If I close the switch this goes to ground and all of the power out here will turn on when I close that switch. As an alternative, we will do this. I have put a NPN Darlington from green to ground, and you can connect this to a microcontroller. That's right, I can control all this power now from, from an Arduino or Raspberry Pi, and that's where this gets to be fun. You can use the, uh, the Arduino or Raspberry Pi to measure the voltages or do whatever. If it needs to really cut on the power for a really heavy load, it can do it under program control. Finally, we have a gray wire up here. That should not be blue. We have a gray wire. And this is the power supply OK. This puts out about, when you turn it on, about 3 volts. And so that's how you tell that the main power supply over here is turned on. Of course, you could always connect an LED indicator between either 3 or 5 volts of ground out here. It does the same thing, but I prefer to use this since it's already there. So that's all there is to it. Just wire up a plug. Just wire it, make yourself a plug. You can always cut the main plug off the end if you want to. I don't like cutting up the power supply because I might use it for other issues. You can get most of your power off these screw terminals or you can make a adapter for these flop for these other cable outputs here and you're ready to go. So good luck and remember this is an ATX2 supply. Thanks for listening.